What's up everyone, welcome to Workshop Rebuilding. In today's episode, I'll share with you guys my restored John Deere 300 garden tractor. I previously rebuilt this garden tractor over a couple of episodes. I'll leave a link down in the description in case you guys are interested on the rebuild process of this tractor here. for me to get to this point as I had to wait for some parts to come in but now I finally managed to assemble everything onto the John Deere 300. In an upcoming video on the John Deere 300 garden tractor I'll share with you guys even more information. I'll share with you guys how long it took me to rebuild this. I'll share with you guys which parts I needed to purchase to complete the rebuild and I'll share with you guys the initial cost on a rebuild like this which I have behind me here. So if you guys are interested in that stay tuned. So in today's video, I will give you guys a walk around this machine. I will give you guys detailed views on most of the components throughout this tractor. After that, I will start this machine up. We will not be going outside today because we had just a heavy snowfall the other day. So with these tires, I don't think I will go anywhere. But if I do find a snowblower in the near future, I will hook it up to this or even the 317 and I will give you guys some action shots on that. Walking up to the John Deere 300, you might notice right off the bat, the rims are not painted. And yes, they have not been painted because I still like the original look and condition of the original rims. I believe these are powder coated rims and I do not want to touch them because they are in perfect condition as you guys can see. There's minimal rust on these rims, so I'll leave them just as they are. The top area, so the green and the black paint has all been refreshed. I added a new seat and a whole bunch of things around the dash have been improved. I'll get to that later, but we'll start on the back of the tractor and move our way forward to the engine. Moving on to the back of the tractor, both taillights are still original. I was able to resurrect these and they still look very good on this tractor. Some people do replace these, but they do have a white rim around them. I still think the original taillights look much better. The white rim taillights I replaced on the John Deere 317, but I still think these are a little bit nicer. I did add a new fuel gauge or a fuel cap, so this is brand new. Down below we have our double pulley for our rototiller and our lift mechanism for the rototiller. Everything around the back has been repainted. So looking at the tires, these are still the original ones that were on here when I purchased this tractor. Uh, there's still quite a bit of tread even though these are just turf tires. These sidewalls still are in good condition. Hopefully they don't dry rot too fast, but they still look like they're in good condition. Same as the front tires. Maybe the tread on the front tires is a little bit lower, but it still looks like it's in good condition. Moving on to the back, the whole rear fender has been repainted and I added the grip tape on the rear fender as well. So on the right side and on the left side, you will see new grip tape. I did not manage to find the decal for the middle section. That would be right here, and it will give you some advice for your mower deck and for your hydraulic levers. I will still have to find that decal. The seat is an aftermarket seat. I went with this as I did with the 317. It's a very similar setup, so this is a universal aftermarket seat. Even though it's yellow, it'll probably fit most John Deere's, but at the same time, it'll probably fit most garden tractors out there. Since it has a whole bunch of bolt holes on the bottom, you can adjust it where you'd like it. And I think it's not a bad seat and it wasn't a bad price either. Moving up front, we have the center or the dash of this garden tractor. And I customized this to my liking. Uh, many people may not like it, but I think it looks very sharp on this tractor. When you look at it from a distance, it looks very impressive in my opinion. I still have all the original knobs which were on these levers, so this got a little bit sunburnt, but maybe I can polish that out in the near future. All I have to do is unscrew it. Off to the left, that is the original amp meter. I did paint this dash with an oil-based marker, so all the symbols and the outlines have been painted yellow, and it looks fairly nice. Over here, we have our PTO switch, our choke, our lights, and all these switches and cables have been repurposed from the machine. Nothing has been replaced. I did add a special gauge, which is an hour meter. I thought this would be a very nice option for this garden tractor. Since I did a complete rebuild on the engine, I thought this would be nice to have an hour meter. And as of right now, I have about 
two hours on this tractor, just over two hours. I did some test runs outside before the snow fell, and this is the condition that the tractor is still in today. So moving away from the dash, you guys will probably see a pristine condition steering wheel. So this John Deere might have not been used too much before I even purchased this. Uh, this is an original steering wheel, and it's actually crazy how good of condition this steering wheel actually is in. Moving on from the midsection forward, we have a whole bunch of green panels. So we have the hood, we have the side panel, and the instrumental panel. All these panels have been painted green, and I added the John Deere 300 decal to it as well. The John Deere 317 has a different decal with the tiger stripes on the side and the 317 logo. This one is an older style. It just has the yellow stripe and it has the 300 logo up front. The John Deere 400, which I'm rebuilding, will have the exact same stripe as this John Deere 300. With the side panels, you do not see the engine whatsoever. But when we come to the front, it looks actually very impressive with the side panels. The John Deere 317, which I have outside, does not have these side panels. But I actually like the look of the side panels on the John Deere 300 almost a little bit more. And on the 317, since it has two cylinders, I almost like it without the side panels. So it's very interesting. When we look at it from the front, we have our repurposed lens. I was able to clean this up and polish it from the outside. And I also gave this John Deere 300 lens a nice black rim along the perimeter. So that looks fairly sharp when you look at it from the front. Another part which I had to purchase and I was waiting for that part to complete this rebuild is the front grill. The front grill was actually in good condition when I got it, but there was still a little bit of straightening out to do. Some of these were a little bit bent, but I got everything looking very nicely. Everything is straight and there's no dents in this whatsoever anymore. Behind the grill, we have our PTO clutch. I replaced that bearing and that looks pretty sharp. The contrast from the red to the black. We have our hydraulic couplers right here. These have been rebuilt and they look very nice as well. On the other side of the garden tractor, which is the left side of the tractor, we have our two hydraulic levers. The left lever, which is this one right here, will lower and raise the mower deck. And the same lever will bring the cylinder out and in, which also activates this bar in the back. And that will allow us to lift or lower our rotor tiller in the rear. The second lever, which we have, which is closer to the dash, is for our auxiliary hydraulics and the auxiliary hydraulics are right here on the front. I think some of the John Deere 300 series would have an option for rear auxiliary hydraulics, which would be somewhere down here, but this tractor does not have that option. So I just popped open the hood and there's not much going on under the hood. We have our engine, which is the front of this garden tractor. We have the middle section, which holds our battery. And underneath the dash, we have all our wiring for the gauges on the dash. We have our battery, this is a 12 volt system. Our positive goes to our starter solenoid and the negative hooks up to the top of the engine. This negative cable is a little bit long, but I'll keep it that way. There's nothing wrong with that. Up front on the hood, we have our three headlights. We have one wire coming to the dash panel, which leads to our light switch. This is an air-cooled engine, and that's why it is a little bit larger than you'd see a liquid-cooled engine but this is a fairly large engine which sits up front and we have our shrouds which cover this engine. Obviously these green ones are from John Deere, but the engine internally has its own shroud system and that's manufactured by Kohler. So basically this engine can be taken out or replaced without any issues and it is a Kohler air-cooled engine. I just went through the whole John Deere 300 garden tractor from back to front. I shared with you guys the engine bay last, and now I'll give you guys the startup on this John Deere 300 garden tractor.
I just shared with you guys the final product, which is the John Deere 300. I shared with you guys the running condition of this tractor. I did not put it past idle because the engine was still cold. Uh, normally I take four to five minutes and let engines warm up, especially an air cooled engine like this will warm up a little bit quicker, but four to five minutes is good. And then I would raise the RPM to then go drive it on the field. In today's video, I won't be riding it because there's a whole bunch of snow outside and I don't think it'll go anywhere with these tires. So I'll set this aside until I find an attachment that will suit this machine where I can really use it. It did come with a mower deck, so I might rebuild that and put it on here. Uh, I do already have a mower deck on the 317, so technically I could swap these out. They are both 48 inch mower decks and they have the exact same setup. So the hookup points on this John Deere 300 are exactly the same as the 317 outside. I would really like to find a snow blower or a blade. I already mentioned that before. Uh, it would really just suit this season right now and especially the snow load that we usually receive. I don't know how good it would be with these tires in the snow either, so I'd really have to see what I could do. Uh, maybe put a, an extra weight basket on the back and then try it out, but I'm really not sure what I can find, especially for this time of day. If you guys have any questions about the John Deere 300 in specific, leave a comment down below. I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. You guys can even ask other questions about other projects that I'm currently working on. A whole bunch of parts are coming in very soon, so I'll have a whole bunch of new videos on different projects. Um, that'll be very fun. This right here is basically done. I might have to do some minor touch-ups on some things to this tractor, but other than that, it's ready to go. If you guys made it to this point in the video and you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. It gives me feedback if I'm doing the right thing, if you guys enjoy my videos and or what I could do better if you guys do not like my video. And if you guys haven't subscribed already, consider doing so as I'll have a whole bunch of new projects. If you guys want to, I have some sneak peeks on my Instagram, which is at workshop rebuild. On Instagram, I share with you guys behind the scenes pictures over there. So if you guys are interested, you guys can see what I do behind the scenes. And then the video is basically the end product on those sneak peek pictures or videos that I share throughout the week as I'm working on these machines. And if you guys are following along on other projects, I will have updates very soon. So as always, stay tuned.